Welcome back to another episode of Island Turtle Talk. I am Island Turtle. We have a guest today, a really fun, like just beautiful <laughs> human being. Um, and honestly, guys, just a heads up when we get together, it's just it's a it's a laugh fest. So for those of headphones, just just a heads up. Um, but this is Hekate Honey. She also goes by Natalie. She's you're a lot of things. I like I don't think I could call you just one thing. Like if you could dis- <laughs> if you could like. I don't know, explain more about like who you are, what you do, you know, Ooh. all that good stuff. Cause it is a lot. It's like, I can't, I don't have one word for you. Yeah, where do I start with that? Um, I mean, I feel like I'm a mystic, like what we talked about previously, you brought up in your live <laughs> yeah. and, um, you know, I, I, I'm a witch. I'm a definitely a spiritual being. I am a happy, joyful person. Um, a healer. I work with energies. Um, you know, I just generally want to be a thoughtful, considerate person who lives with compassion and purpose in this world, you know, and I really feel like as a healer and a spiritual person, like that's who I really, um, want to embody and put out into the world. So I don't know, did that, does that work? (laughs) I think that's a good all encompassing description for yourself. Absolutely. Um, And I know you wanted to open the episode uh, with a a circle. Oh yeah. Okay. So thank you for bringing that. I almost forgot. Uh, Whenever I do something spiritual or even engaging where there's energy put around us, which you and I just generate a lot of energy when we talk, I like to put a sacred circle around the spaces and, you know, it'll also encompass Island Turtle and whoever is watching. So uh, Lord, goddess, spirit guides, angels, watchtowers of the north, south, east, and west, elements of earth, air, fire, and water, great spirit, beloved ancestors, uh, my beloved Hakate and Horus, Freya and Breed, the Morrigan, Tutu, Pele, and Gaia, and my warriors, Sekhmet, Isis, and Kali, I call upon all of you, my beautiful divinities, to honor this space and protect it, and give us your guiding light and sacred ceremonial space and uh, just give us strength and peace and let us say what we need to say and be with us in this space. Mo it be. Mm, I love that. I was yeah. smiling when you brought up Horus because he was in my dreams last night. Woo! Horus! <laughs> yeah, it was so crazy. <laughs> I'm sure my cousins won't mind because it's about my cousins. So yeah. my cousin was, their siblings, and she was trying to throw something to my other cousin and a falcon came out of nowhere and just like grabbed it and it started to glow and I was like wow and it was like it was so obviously a falcon which to me is just Horus all day yeah well you know my personal history with Horus is like I've had visions of Horus and I've been with him and we are very definitely connected in so many ways and uh oh he's just like the masculine divine for me, you know? Ugh, yeah. 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 And honest, you're so powerful. As you were doing that, that prayer, I was like, my third eye, my eyes were like freaking out. And I was like, oh, I could feel it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was showering. And whenever I take a shower, I, I, you know, I say that incantation and call in all my divinities to clear away pretty much, you know, as spiritual beings, we pick up so much um what's the word I guess like energy or like we kind of can be sponges and so whenever I take my shower I definitely say that incantation and then put protection all around me and um clear away anything that doesn't serve me and that I can wash away and uh, I just I was while I was in the shower I was like oh this would be great to like say while we're speaking you know and just clear away anything and protect our little space here and for all the viewers just you know feel us yeah yeah yeah, absolutely. And especially because earlier I did the live and then I was like, oh, I got to like, I have shit to do, but I got to ground. I got to like get out of this really <laughs> intense ass energy. So for those who may not know, so I did the live for the new moon Gemini and there was a lot of ancestral energy that we were like, we're here and we need to talk. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> we're it was talking. Heavy. It was heavy. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think? What did you think about all that stuff that came through? I mean, I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was very poignant for especially not what's just going on for the collective, but for even you and me, like we have so much generational clearing and, um, and like the, the lineages 
that we work with in our just energetic, you know, our own energetic ways. And uh, so I felt like it was definitely poignant for us. And then with the collective, it was like, yeah, that's what's been coming up. Like even personally, all of that triggering for, I, did, I mean, I've told her, but I haven't told all of you. I had a lot of triggering in the last few weeks with some personal changes in my life. And normally I, I'm kind of, you know, no one likes to, I don't like change, but I know it has to happen. And then, um, but these changes just like triggered the hell out of me. And, and so I feel like a lot of it had to do with def, definitely generational wounding, you know, abandonment issues that have gone down the line. Also coming from, you know, a long line of alcoholics. It's like, there was a lot going on there. Yeah. Yeah. I could feel all that in your life. I was like, Oof. and the root chakra, the root stuff, like that's what I've been working on that foundational safety from just my own being. Yeah. Yeah. The root chakra stuff has been crazy the last few months for everybody. And I keep like running into people or hearing stories about like, I just, my ankle just broke out of nowhere. I had this like random foot injury. My ankle swelled, my feet swelled. And it's like, yeah, it's, ma- <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. It's massive, massive, massive yeah. root work. When I told you I'd been, I had to move at work. And so I had to find a new route to walk and um, my joints had been hurting the last few months. And uh, I just felt really achy. And I started going on this new walk on like uneven ground and heel heels, hills. I can't talk words. <laughs> and uh and for some reason in the last few days, something cleared. I think it's because I've been taking my walk and touching more trees, talking to more trees and, you know, grounding myself more. And uh, all of a sudden my ankle doesn't hurt as much and my joints, I can, I can move more freely and bend and again, when, you know, I hadn't been for the last few months. Yeah. It's funny. We're so like in sync. Cause I had, <laughs> I had another huge release in the last couple of days mm-hmm. after the family stuff that I was dealing with. And I was, I woke up and I was like, I was like trying to move. And again, like the joints pain, right. It's like, like feeling like you've been in in an egg for like years or something like a baby bird. Um, I'm sure it's easier for them to get out of eggs, but anyway. Um, And I'm like, I'm trying to move. And then I was like, I was like, oh, I can feel it. Like I could feel the energy like wanted to release. Yeah. And so I like, I just let it, let, so when I release energy, like I can feel where it's in my body and where it wants to go. So I just kind of like let it facilitate my movements to facilitate the release. Yeah. And so I'm getting up in a very weird, awkward exorcist like way. But then like once I'm like standing up, <laughs> but once I'm actually like standing up, it's like, it just went like, all through my legs and my knees and my ankle, like everything. And it was like, I was like, oh, good. That's so good that you know where it's going. Sometimes it just feel like it's like trapped in me and I have to, that's to like burst out. (laughs) (laughs) So if we're to like little chicken eggs, it's like, I'm the one that's slowly (laughs) crawling out and you're just like, right. Mine is like dragon's fire. It's like, (laughs) oh, that's, yeah, I I could see that. I could totally see that with you. (laughs) Um, And, you know, it's funny. It reminds me of all the movies that are out right now, too. Um, I almost went to the movies yesterday and I I didn't, which I'm actually happy I didn't. What were you going to see, though? I was torn between Elementals. The Elemental movie is out. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I really, really want to see that. And then interestingly enough, uh, the Flash movie was capturing my attention, which I was like, why is that capturing? That's like, because I'm not a huge Marvel DC person. I like just kind of started oh, diving into that. Yeah, huh? yeah, I love Marvel and DC. There's definitely a lot of nuggets. There's a lot of nuggets of disclosure in those movies. For well, sure. Well, The Flash is interesting because he does move so fast. He can kind of like alter dimensional space. Yeah. So that's super interesting. Not to mention the uh, lead actor has been definitely going through some stuff. What's been, wait, what's been happening? I don't ever keep up on stuff like oh, that. So he, ha- I want to, I don't know if he was on drugs or had just like some mental issues, but he was definitely going through some breaks where he got, um, there was some thing of like kidnapping and like wait, um, what? assaults and they're trying to keep it really quiet because they had already filmed most of the movie and he's in every frame, but he went on some like crazy, I want to say like year bender where he was traveling with some young girl and then assaulting people and going crazy even in Hawaii oh he was assaulting people yeah yeah he was oh. kind of crazy but 
then I guess they got him under heel and he's been behaving himself, but that's why they're not promoting, like have him out promoting the movie a lot. That's interesting. When you first said, well, in kidnapping, wait, so he kidnapped somebody? Something about like, (laughs) something about like some young girl and the parents are like, he took her, but it looked, you know, she was there willingly, I'm sure with him. And yeah, that's why I don't know if it was like drugs or just mental issues or some like and then there was like rumors of like a culty thing i don't know it's very dramatic oh look look it up look up his name and then like what the news has been for the last year yeah Yeah, it's all that drama okay (laughs) (laughs) my life is very peaceful usually so i look for the drama outside well and it's interesting because i feel like we're also in this time and i know we've talked about it before but i feel like it's getting more intense where like people's repressed darkness or you could Mm -hmm. say like inner demons are just like out oh sorry so that really loud the microphone sorry out and it's like it's a little scary it's a little scary when I look at some people now just out and about I mean it sounded almost like a demon got him or something for like a few a little while that's what it reminded me of yeah hear about possessions like (laughs) sort of reminded me I was like Whoa, this should be interesting so like I was kind of dying to see the movie to see if any of that came through you know okay well yeah. I decided not to see it and then I almost because I was I don't know I was in a weird place just because you know the stuff yeah. I've been dealing with um and then I was like maybe I'll see Little Mermaid for a third time <laughs> mm, I love Little Mermaid oh my god okay <laughs> Okay, dive in. I know I know we've been di- dying to dive in. Okay, we guys, we saved Little Mermaid for you. Okay. We've been wanting to talk about it for like what a week? It feels like a week, but time is I mean, weird. I didn't have that much to say about it because okay. I just loved it. But there was one part at the very end that I just lost my shit and thought it was hilarious. But I don't know if it'll be <laughs> like offensive to say, but I don't know. Okay. So one, I totally sh- okay. Island Turtle had told me she watched the movie and that it sounded like they were underwater when they were underwater. Like you said, it sounded like different, right? Like they. Oh, to me, it sounded like they transposed like the animated singing voices on top of the actors' voices. Because every time I heard the songs and some of the dialogue, the dialogue more so that like the dialogue really stuck out to me on some things where it was like, I felt like I could hear like the anim- like the the classic like the animated original oh. sound behind oh, it oh i misunderstood that's okay that's okay yeah so um no i didn't i didn't notice that one much i did notice it did sound weird when they're underwater which they're underwater so however they wanted to make that sound and then um i loved like you know sebastian and flounder and what, what's the seagull's name oh scuttle, scuttle. oh my god and that was perfect was, casting oh my god, i love her yeah the, um what's the actress's name aquafina aquafina i mean i've known her since she did the song my vag i mean she's amazing <laughs> do you remember Maybe i don't even know about oh that my one god. okay <laughs> quick reference so there's like I don't know if it's a punk rock song or something but it's like this one band and he talked about I mean this is kind of rated r is that okay yeah yeah okay so he talked about my dick and how great his dick is and like you know that like if you have this sad little dick and then this dick in my dick is better right like the whole song is about that but Aquafina changed it up and talked about my vag and like (laughs) how like your vag is like syphilis and my vag is like this you know like just how great her vag is (laughs) <laughs> he's amazing I love her she's an amazing actress I had no so she's originally in music then is she not in originally yeah, she was in music I think first oh. and then comedy and then she started doing movies like crazy rich Asians I loved her in that she has her own show too she's hilarious I mean no she is she's hysterical I I didn't see crazy rich Asians everybody tells me I need to see oh, it it's so good I've watched it like so I read the books too. The books are really good too. It's a romance, isn't it? Yes, but it's okay. really good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> With romance movies, I always have to go, do I want to watch this? I always just need to like take a little like inventory if I really but want it's an to. Asian romance. Like how often do you see that? I'm like loving all the Asian movies and like, you know what I mean? Just where they're out of the box and they're not like all white people, right? Oh, you sure, know? sure. <laughs> it's not like, yeah, I'll support Asian culture. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, on that reason alone, I should watch it. I should. You should. You yeah. should. 
but anything I've seen her in, yeah, I've, I love her. And that was like perfect casting for Scuttle. That was like, that was such a joy and new little like twist to bring to the story. Cause for anybody who hasn't seen it, like they follow it pretty verbatim, like yeah. how they do with most of these like live animated, th- uh, animated movies, live animated, you know what I mean? I got you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, um, but I mean, the neurodivergent part of me, and we talked about this, had such a hard time with like just the little visual things, like not the things that people even complained about, but just like the like the stiffness, right? Where it was like I could tell they were clearly in some sort of like harness or mechanical thing, and they had to like act like they're swimming, but they're contained, right? Yeah. So I could yeah. see that physical struggle. And then with uh, Melissa McCarthy who, as Ursula. Oh Great. my God. Go ahead. Go ahead. I Go loved ahead. her as Ursula. Like, I know the original Ursula was based on um, a drag queen, actually. Yeah. And uh, I can't remember their name but um I thought she was amazing it was so good and so true to life and and just that nastiness but the fabulousness at the same time was like so good yeah I no like, I'm gonna be her for Halloween oh there's gonna be a lot of Ursula's for Halloween there's for sure gonna be a lot of Ursula's for Halloween especially in in the LGBTQ community <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of Ursula's for Halloween this year um and I thought she did a great job at like delivering the dialogue in her own way. Cause it's like, that's such an iconic character. Everybody knows how all of those lines are said. Yes. So I, yeah, I, I do think she did a good, a good job with that. Um, so I don't know if this is something that you were like picking up at all with the Little Mermaid, but like, you know, as far as like the, um, as it relates to like the collective and some like stuff that, like we are working through and the dynamics at play between her dad and Ursula and her like in that like dynamic of like, how do I want to, how do I even want to go there with that? Like the repressed feminine, I guess. Mm -hmm. I almost want to say dark feminine, but I feel like there's distortion in saying dark feminine. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's not necessarily dark feminine. It's more like the, it kind of, um, like when you say dark feminine, I think of like the anger that can come out from women, like women's rage, right? Which is usually downplayed as, or it's hysterical, right? But really we have latent rage, right? But um, (laughs) you're making me laugh. And, uh, but as like, are you just like doing a juxtaposition between her as like the repressed feminine and then he's like the divine masculine kind of like subjugating her? Well, I could, there's repression on, on Ariel's side and Ursula's side, Yeah. right? Oh, wait, hold on a second. Hold on. Sorry. Give me a second. Okay. Something came up on my computer. Anyway, <laughs> um, on Ariel's side and Ursula's side, like, there's obviously repression, right? And it's like, yeah. I don't remember if this was part of the original story about him banishing Ursula. Like, I don't remember that as part of the original story. Yeah, I didn't remember her as related because that yeah. was her brother and she yeah. said big brother and um yeah but when you bring that up it's like yeah like the um it reminds me of Sedna which you had been talking about so much right mm-hmm. and then even Sekhmet with that whole like you know maybe she was called to do the dark the dark things and then punished for it do you know what yes I mean? exactly like, uh, what was it who was who was Thor's and Loki's sister too um oh you know who she was like the warrior and then she was she kind of went nuts and then was banished too like odin i i know who you're talking about i know i the name escapes me the name escapes me but loki's daughter comes to mind which i don't think were part of the i forget if it's marvel or dc i I know it wasn't part of the marvel movies but his daughter hell oh yeah dude yeah because all of his children were <laughs> wait this is what we do she'll bring something up and I go dude and then I'll do the same thing she'll go yeah you know what I just realized what we sound like um Keanu Reeves and um Bill and Ted yes we sound like that we do we sound like Bill and Ted we told him like Bill and Ted. dude yeah, yeah. dude, dude. <laughs> it's our Californianess. <laughs> um hey, this dude surfs up <laughs> <laughs> we make each other laugh it's like it's like so contagious um but yeah like I, okay so I guess I keep coming back to that term dark feminine right where it's like 
it's like in my mind, it's like, it doesn't have to be this distortedness of it, but it's like that there is a place for energies that have to get into darkness for specific reasons. Yeah. Right. Cause like, we do need that balance. And then even when you think about, so I'm sorry, I think like all these other references that just came to mind. No. Cause like her dad's basically Poseidon, right? I know we're not like calling him that in the movie, but he's basically Poseidon. Yeah. Right. So you have this like. Well, in the m- movie he's Triton, right? Yeah. King Triton. Yeah. yeah. And the Triton, the Triton's a whole other like thing that kept jumping out at me too. Yeah. Um, but we have this like masculine feminine and in a way like kind of like light and dark right? Sort of like primordial forces, Mm -hmm. right? That are there at play. And it's like, it's just interesting to see how they were portraying that this like darkness, even our darkness, or even just as it relates to the feminine is imprisoned and trying to break out. Well, and it would, okay. So that brings up a whole other thing because there's definitely these roles of femininity, femini- femininity, femininity, and, uh, you know, Ursula, yeah, is like that supposed darkness, angry, hysterical woman, right, and then Ariel's like the pure and innocent, naive one, and then where's the middle empowered one, do you know what I mean, yeah. like, it, it would have been nice to have some, okay, I'm gonna rewrite the story, it would have been nice to have <laughs> some, like, reclamation of the feminine in the movie, where, like, Ursula becomes redeemed, or Ariel can turn herself into it instead of having daddy fix it for her to make her human. Right? Yeah. I mean, even, excuse me, even within the little mermaid, there are, there is a lot of distortion, like just like that. Right. Even the whole concept of losing her voice that I think yes. everybody can relate to. Cause I mean, even the clip that you showed me that you sent me, it's like, yeah, she does. She goes from like this independent, like, I know what I want to like, just become, I hate to sit, no, I'm not, okay, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> like, she gives up her voice and like her, her like fins and everything to have legs for this man. Yeah. 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 Dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. So, so, so much going on in like that one little movie. And that's why I'm excited to see Elementals. Yeah, elementals will be good. Yeah. Yeah. One, I love the fact, okay, as the little teenage witch heart in me, like, I love the fact that they're talking about the different elements of earth, air, fire, and water, right? Like, it's kind of like, oh, here's a little offering of like witchiness to the world through like a children's <laughs> Pixar movie. You know I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and here's how you like live with all of them together I, i'm together. sure that's what the movie's about i'm sure well, and, you know like that's so important right now with you know the environment and honoring the earth which has always been something i feel deeply you know connected to and about and uh so yeah the, i think the elementals is is really amazing oh but okay back to little mermaid really quick okay yeah so this is the part I, I okay so you know at the end when he's like when triton the father comes out of the water and he has like his little crown on and his yeah. hair is like kind of like mine right now, but wet. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It reminded me of like sea Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> sea Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> because it's right with the little, it looked like the crown of thorns. Oh my God, that's right. That might be, I'm sorry if I've offended anybody, but, which Jesus and I are friendly. But like, yeah, it was like, oh, it's like sea Jesus. <laughs> And I just stopped myself from laughing out loud because it was a poignant move- moment in the mo- movie. It was supposed to be like, you know, sweet. Heart yeah. Movie. Well, and on another little tangent about Little Mermaid. Oh, okay. Spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen it because this was a change from the original to the live action, not live animated, live action. Um, where she like actually straight up killed him instead of just turning him into a little creature oh, yes. and like vaporized him. Yes. I, like, I sat up out of my chair and I was like, I was yeah, like, like she dusted him out yeah, yeah he was like became dust yeah yeah I kind of was wondering about those little creatures because you know those things that were grabbing at her yeah. were those the little creatures that they were supposed to be from the animated film? I assume I assume 
I assume they were supposed to be. I mean, you know, limitations, I suppose. I and I thought maybe it was cheaper to vaporize him than to make him a little creature. Maybe. maybe something else. I mean, I did miss the, I told you, I missed the La Poisson, La Poisson song about the little fish and the chef sings. That's not in there. Spoiler alert. If yeah. you were all excited, I will sing that song for days. It gets stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> how i love to cook little fish <laughs> it is a very catchy song but they did replace it with a new one that honestly every i just put it on to laugh i just put it on to hear aquafina sing and just laugh like you're seeing as scuttle and well no the- and they gave him eric a song too if he didn't have a song before did he no i loved his song i loved his song and there was the whole caribbean vibe which i loved yeah like you know the um caribbean mother i thought it was really great yeah no yeah i definitely enjoyed that too 100 percent. yeah but um so bring it back to like energy work (laughs) because we could just go on um so i mean coming back to also just what you do right so I'm like I'm also curious because I don't think we've ever talked about this like what is out of all of your different tools and modalities and things you can do like what is your favorite uh I definitely think the healing is my favorite there's something that happens when uh I channel the energy of like not just myself but the universe that travels through me like the Reiki or even the chakra clearing or just the hands-on people like um I feel like that is the most one. I feel like that's my biggest gift. And then two, it's helping others. And then um, I feel like there's just nothing better than putting my hands on someone or even in a long distance. And I start and someone's like, oh, oh, I feel that. (laughs) It trips me out because, you know, you can live in a vacuum and think you have these gifts. But until you hear someone else say it, it's like so validating And um, because, you know, for a long time, especially even as a kid, I thought I was crazy. You know, I'm sure you relate. You think you're kind of crazy. Like, is this really happening? Am I just losing my mind or, you know, and uh, so to actually have that validated and then know that you're able to help someone like that's really important to me, like being of service and, uh, you know, serving the good of humanity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Confirmation, I think is so important with this line of work and like even till now like there are times where I'm like 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 you said am I crazy like especially with some of the downloads I get I mean some of the downloads I've gotten have been pretty out there and I'm like am I really supposed to say this am I really- you are though because so much of things you've said I've I relate to and resonate with me and I'm like oh thank god I'm not the only one I mean that's why I even fell in love with you when I started listening to your readings because you would say things that no one else had said and that I had experienced and I was like oh finally there's someone else I'm not alone I found like at least like the tribe which I'm sure so many of the people you know your followers just that's the reason because they don't feel alone anymore and it's not just love readings and twin flames Mm -hmm. (laughs) trigger word (laughs) trigger warning (laughs) did you see her face your face right now you're like did I really I like I can't hide but I can't hide my reaction a lot of the time it's it's almost impossible that's why at work I have to really just like put on like a whole I feel like it's almost like spell work like I have to put on a face like oh yeah I'm really happy (laughs) here it is it is it is it is magic it is magic right to have to masquerade yeah as normal or supposedly normal actually I'm coming out of that whole closet too like at work they even had me smudge the offices and I they see my crystals strewn about my office now and uh, (laughs) I got to put my hands on you know like heal my boss or at least you know give him a little energy which that's interesting I never thought you know that would happen Can I, is it okay to ask how that's going? Like, is that okay to ask? About? Like, how is that progressing? Like being magical at work openly? I think actually it's really good. I was surprised because I, well, when I'd worked, okay. I'd worked alone for a long time in an office away from everybody else. And, um, and my boss and I were in an office, like a big space. And then I was in a warehouse and, um, 
And now they move me with the main population or at least half of the population. A lot Make of Make it population. sound like prison. <laughs> I'm in the general population now. <laughs> they move me main out of solitary. Office. <laughs> main office, right? I mean, I don't mind solitary. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry. No, no, no. So I was like, well, I'm an introvert. But um, so when they moved me to this new office, I was like, what's the energy going to be like there? So I smudge. I was planning on sneakily because I come in before everybody else smudging my office. But then um, my boss brought up and goes, oh, well, you know, maybe you can burn sage. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I was actually planning on doing that. So weird you said that. He goes, oh, will you come and do my office too? And I'm like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> and so I did both the offices and uh, my office. And then um, there's some weird energy there though. Okay. So let me just, the energy there is very dense and heavy as opposed to where I was a half mile away. And I feel like it has to do with some, something with the land, like maybe um, the atrocities of the, like the indigenous and building the San Gabriel mission or something. But um, I was validated in that too, the other day, because one of my coworkers, he sees things like and he, he came in and I was telling him like, oh, it feels a little better now that I got the crystals in here. But uh, he, he goes, yeah, you're right. He goes, it's like on your shoulders and your neck and your head. I go, yes. And as the day goes on, it's like very wearing, especially on my crown. And, and like, I have to put my hair up to cover my crown. And then the minute I leave like the general vicinity, it's like, it lets up. So I've had wow. to do a lot of work just in my office to try and counteract that and then I did some research and there was that um key Indian uh she was like key Indian of the Tongva tribes that were native there a hundred, couple hundred years ago before the missions and as the missions came in she actually led a re revolt and her name was Toy Perina I think wow. and uh, so I'm and she was a very strong medicine woman and I've been getting these feminine kind of like energy and I almost feel like it's her pain and like waves of sadness. So that's been pretty interesting. I'm like, well, maybe that's why I was sent over there because I fought going over there. <laughs> well, the circumstances were also weird how they were sending there was you no over reason there. For it, but I'm not the boss. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I'm the boss of my own life. <laughs> that's what that's all that matters. That's all company. that matters. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your face is always so expressive. You can just say everything with one look. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm like so curious to see how that's also going to develop too with clearing all of that. Because it almost feels like as you were talking, I was feeling this, not confrontation because that sounds aggressive, but it's like this very direct, almost conversation is kind of how it feels is like wanting to take place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I don't know how to connect into that energy yet. Um, I mean, just as backstory, I don't generally, like I channel and I can channel say like my divinities or my higher self or others that are connected to me usually um, like my spirit team and my spirit guides, but I've never say connected to a, a deceased human. Do you know what I mean? like in terms of someone I didn't know or who wasn't part of my ancestry. So that's, um, we'll see how that goes. Maybe, maybe my gift is broadening out and things are reaching out to me, you know. It, it could be, it could be. I mean, mediumship came up earlier in that live pretty strongly. Ooh, that's a lot though. <laughs> I, as somebody who is always battling my own mediumship abilities. Yeah, I get it. It's like, like that one just feels so... I don't have a word for it. I also feel like maybe something happened when I was really young that made me just go, no, <laughs> can I reject no. this right now? I had experiences and it, yeah, it's scary. It also reminds me of, you know, the movie Ghost with Whoopi Goldberg. It reminds oh. me of her. Did you ever see this? I'm trying to think. Whoopi Goldberg. Ghost. Well, now she's on The View, but it right. was the movie with Patrick Swayze. And oh, Tony no, Farm. I haven't seen it. I know it's, I know, I know, I know. Uh, no, there's so many movies I bring okay I talk to her a lot and there's so many movies I bring her she's like, I haven't seen that and I'm like what are you doing with your life no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> it's on the list it's on the never-ending okay. list so anyway go ahead, go ahead. I'll go tell ahead. you so she's like a medium and Patrick Swayze is trying to 
get her to, you know, connect with him so he can connect with Demi Moore, his love who's in danger. Right. And, uh, but the thing is, she is supposedly like a medium, but she's using it for like kind of wrong purposes. She's kind of shysty, but then there's all these spirits that want to come through and like, it, it's just like people are constantly talking to her and she's like, ah, I can't deal with it. <laughs> That's what it feels like. <laughs> or even like 3000 years of longing. Like that freaks me out. Like that idea. Oh. He's the transmitter, right? Oh, That's a good movie if anybody like. hasn't seen that. Oh my God. Yeah, that's an amazing movie. That that I think is a must, especially for any mystics out there. That is that is a beautiful. must. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah, yeah, the the transmitter thing. Yeah, that's that is that is totally what that feels like. <laughs> like, and you and I have had a lot of conversations about this too because I have a hard time some well, I historically had a hard time explaining my gifts and how I get information. And it's like that, like, I'm, oh yeah, like I'm a, I'm a transmitter. Like, that's exactly what it is. It's like, so I just pick up on everything and it's just like filter, filter, like just trying to organize it. That would be so difficult. I don't get that as much. I get more waves of emotions and feelings rather than say like words. Yeah. But some people are very strong projectors as well. And then you can like read minds, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> she can read my mind. Remember when we were together and you were like, I don't even remember what it was about, but you answered my question. I didn't even ask. And I'm like, shut out of my head. Well, you and I are super connected. I think that's a, that's a, that's a connection thing, but I did have <clears throat> a few years ago, that ability came online to like hear people's thoughts like directly. And it was like, oh no, no. Mm-mm. <laughs> like that's a lot of crazy town I don't need to I don't need to hear crazy in everyone's head because everyone's a little crazy everybody's I like mean, human yeah, brains are our thoughts like thank god they're not put out there like a big walking like teleprompter because that would be <laughs> terrible right like the things I think like shit oh my god <laughs> oh my god no yeah because it's like I mean even just as someone who's aware right? It's like, we're aware of ourselves. And like a lot of us, I think have gotten better at mastering our own minds, but there's still a thought that creeps up every once in a while. Like, and even like to yourself, you're like, why the hell did I just think that? Why did I just picture that? Yeah. <laughs> I do that. All the time. I'm like, Natalie, what is wrong with you? Like, as if there's, you know, <laughs> multiple me's. Well, kind of. <laughs> only in magical ways in i um ways. Yeah, actually can it. i share that or is that like too what uh, go ahead i don't even know what you're gonna share but i'm down when with i it. spent the night and what i saw what'd you see i don't remember you okay well I, I'll, I'll just i guess i'll just say it um where i saw you split into three. Oh yeah three of you right yeah so <laughs> so i'm in this magical apartment Right. And I'm like, I already know I'm going to like see things or have weird things. And so I went into that state and like, it was dream time, but it wasn't like, I was clearly like an astral in your apartment yeah. and you were standing in front of me and then you were kind of glowing a little bit and you like yeah. literally split into three of you and they all look like you just physically a little different. <laughs> like one was really tall and like one was kind of like really short and skinny. And it was like, it was like, wait, there's three of you, but it makes so much sense for like for you and your magic and who you relate to. Well, yeah, I mean, dream time. That's why, you know, I'm busy when I'm sleeping. I think that's why, like, I have two cats. I think that's why they sleep on either side of me. It's like to ground me and keep me safe or something. Cause yeah. they do, they both sleep right around hip level, like on either side of me. And I was thinking about that lately. I'm like, oh, my little magical creature is keeping me safe while I travel around everywhere at night. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes yeah. so much sense. And like, really and Clyde helps me too, but you know, he prioritizes food more than, more than the work these days. Like, wake up, feed me. <laughs> wake up, feed me. But he might be waking you up to pull you back, you know, from something. That is true. That's funny. I didn't think about that. Hmm. I did yeah. not think about that. Yeah. Okay. Because you're such a compassionate, caring fur baby mom. He knows that like you think it's food, but really he was like, I gotta get this bitch out of here. She's not <laughs> safe. <laughs> well, there, again, there has been crazy stuff going on collectively. Oh, so. There's so much stuff going on. Woo. Yeah. 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 
But um, so I, you know, tell more about your work. I'm sure people are also curious because I know you do way more than energy work. Okay. You know? Um, okay, so just background. This is where my little gifts have come in. Like as a kid, I definitely felt um different. And I really felt like I didn't fit in. And um, I kind of felt like an alien, like I didn't fit in with my family. And uh, there was like some trauma and abuse. And, um, and so I feel like from a young age, I kind of split like what she was talking about between who like I really was, and then who I thought I'm supposed to be. And then who I put out into the world and like my little protections. And uh, so I just remember trying to protect myself from a really early age and whether that be from physical people or non-physical entities, like I knew I had to be really vigilant and, um, and like, it seemed like the things that made other kids feel safe. I didn't feel, you know, like, um, my mom telling me it's going to be okay. Or, you know, um, I, that didn't work for me. <laughs> I knew, I like knew, like I had so much fear, like things aren't okay. And there was so much like pain and fear being thrown at me just from my surroundings, which I then thought it was just me. Right. But now I know I was absorbing all of this energy around me. And, um, and so from a, like a really young age, one, I started drinking because it was a huge release and to numb out and it kind of put a buffer and, um, and then I ate, which added a physical buffer with my fluffiness. And, uh, and then, you know, like I escaped into books. And so I just like numbed out a lot and tried not to feel what I thought were my emotions. And, um, and so I also learned really early because my, my, my dad and my stepmom were very like Catholic. They're very religious and, and devout, faithful people. They have a beautiful faith, but I didn't buy it because I was like, I know that's terrible. Um, <laughs> like most of the religions focused around a man. And I was like, I felt very connected with my femininity of like, where are the women? Where are the powerful women, especially, you know, like in Catholicism, there's Mary Magdalene, who is supposed to be the prostitute, which we now know she's not that. Um, and then there's Mary, the mother, who's like this ah, up on the pedestal. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and like where are the empowered like women. And so I started researching a lot of the goddesses. And then I felt very connected to like paganism and witchcraft and, and who were full of wise women and these goddesses who are as powerful or even more powerful than the masculines because they are the life bringers. And I've had dreams since I was little, how, um, I don't think I ever told you that maybe I did, um, that, women actually were in charge and were the the like rulers and leaders but you know because we could create life where men can't do that like they can't create anything as wonderful as they think they are do you know what I mean? <laughs> only we can do that and uh, <laughs> but because of our our ego and our you know arrogance we got kind of pushed down and it flipped and so i feel like you know now mm -hmm throughout history we've been subjugated say by masculines and the patriarchy and uh but so that was my research so i i really delve into that and and learned how to protect myself and energetically and ma manipulate energy and you know learn the properties of the world around us like like the elements what we were just talking about there's so much power in the earth in the air in you know and I, i've read a lot and uh studied a lot and um and so like in my own practices, I think a lot of it is, was organically understood, but then just the breadth of reading, like on my website, I listed, you know, some, some things I've read. <laughs> it seems like a lot, but really it's like nothing. And uh, I should put more in there. And, um, but that all led to say like my Reiki, like uh, knowing that I'm a healer. I just didn't know how to channel it. Um, chakra clearing, which I used on a, on the daily, just because being a, out in the world as a, as a mystic, as a spiritualist, I pick up a lot of, I don't want to say trash. It's like, I just, no, it's, a lot it's energetic it. trash. It is. Mm -hmm. It's energetic gunk. And so I had it's to learn to clear myself out. And, um, and then also like with tarot, like the readings and the collective 
energy. Like it's, I've never used it as a predictive tool. It's like, how can I move through this world more easily and see what energies are, are working on me and my, you know, surroundings. And, um, and then, you know, just channeling that into all those modalities. So it's like, I, like on my website, I offer like healing. I offer like which is long distance or in person. I offer like the, the hugging therapy readings. Um, I'm also really good at helping people transition. I think because I've been in so many, um, I've transitioned and met myself so deeply that I feel like I'm really good at helping people really see what's important and gaining perspective and walking them through probably some really dark tunnels um, because I've walked through some really dark tunnels. And, uh, you know, so that's on there. And then, um, yeah, so there's like the dual and then like shadow work. Like I've done so much work just figuring out like how to be as free as possible. Like that's been, I think my ultimate goal in life is to be free, which Chris brought that up about being free. Yeah. And, uh, and because as a, as a child, I was so bound and, and so consumed with how I was being perceived because I, I felt like unless you're perceived correctly, you're in danger. Right. And like, so to be free of like how I think about myself, what you think of me, where I am. And, uh, and so like everything I offer as healing is are things I've experienced and needed throughout my life and uh, to become a more free, happy, joyous person. And I mean, really like my life is really good. Uh, you like, you know, there are people who look at life and like, oh yeah, they have like the $3 million house and the BMW and all of, like, that's not important to me. Like I drive a little putt putt car, but like <laughs> the peace I feel in my heart and like the connections I can have with people that are authentic and deep and uh, how I walk and, you know, feel in this world uh, I wouldn't trade that for anything so yeah yeah well thank you for sharing your story <laughs> um there's so many things that like as you're talking I'm like I want to talk about that I want to talk about that I want to talk about there's like you know there's always so much to talk about um but freedom right it's like I know right now that is something that is major for people to understand what that means to be free um, and I mentioned this too in one of the weeklies where of all people, which I never would have thought, but years ago, I can't even remember the year, but like Eddie Griffith actually did a stand-up act and he was definitely dropping like nuggets of truth. Yeah. And even to this day, I look back and I'm like, wow, I can't believe, this. I can't believe that came out of Eddie Griffith where he was talking about how freedom's a state of mind. It's like, nobody can give you freedom. If you think you can just like, if you think someone's going to give you freedom, it's like, it's, then you're dumb. You're free dumb. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I mean, we're born joke, free. But, we're yeah. born free. And then we get layers of, of dysfunction and right. Like of conditions put on us that we are supposed to, you know, to believe, to be happy, but really those, uh, I mean, uh, you just want to strip all those away. Yeah, we become institutionalized. Yes. Yeah, which actually- um, Societized. I just, <laughs> well, I just watched a cinema therapy episode on uh, Shawshank, actually. Mm. And there's that line that Morgan Freeman says where he's talking about his experience of what it was like when he first went in, right? Went into prison yeah. for those who haven't seen it, those who are like, too young to know what so Shawshank good. is. So good. Arguably well, the best movie ever made. So definitely worth watching. Um, where he talks about that transition of going into the system, which to me yeah. is like when we're born into this whole crazy, craziness of what we call society, right? And how it went from fighting it and feeling miserable and then becoming used to it and then being yeah. terrified to leave it, becoming yeah. institutionalized. And it's like, yeah, it's like people are, are figuring out how to undo that. Well, the ones well, who are ready for that. Yeah. I mean, that's such a beautiful analogy for being human, right? Like we're born into this life, this meat suit. <laughs> the, the meat, meat suit. suit. My meat suit is just like, I'm like, uh, I'm annoyed by it right now. But um, <laughs> you know, like those days when you're just like, Ugh. 
I feel yeah. like that's like I feel like that's like five out of seven days of the week. I'm like, oh, it's fucking pizza suit. Oh, I mean, me. some days I'm like walking around. I'm like, I feel great. I mean, I'm a big people. I'm a big person, lady. Like anybody, right? I'm a big lady. But um, most of the time, I feel okay with it, right? But like today, I was like, oh, what am I gonna wear? So then I just put on this like tank top. I'm like, no one really has to see like the rest of me, Natalie. <laughs> anyway, so I feel like that's such a beautiful analogy of like you know, we're born into this and then we get these, this conditioning put on us. And like, I feel like the, which prison movies, like the green mile, do you remember that movie? Oh my God. Yes. Okay. So like all of those movies have to do with someone like put into something. Right. And then breaking free of it. And like, I feel like that's such a beautiful analogy for even spiritualists or mystics, whatever mystics is the word we're going with now. Right. Yeah. Like, because we are born into this conditioning we know there's something wrong with it deeply from I'm, I'm pretty sure a really young age but we feel I, I I know I felt so discouraged like why was I born into this why do I feel this way why is this happening to me and then I try and check out for 15 years <laughs> right? and then that doesn't work because you know spirit is trying to get me to wake up like wake up Natalie wake up you have shit to do you have a purpose here and I'm like no no I don't want to wake up I don't want to stay in bed right yeah but, you know, but no I got woken up and then I wake up back into all these feelings again. And I realize, no, you have agency, you have power. And so all of that stuff I had been studying and researching, I knew I learned how to use it to help myself. And then now like want to help other people. But it's like that breaking out of that, that narrow conditioning of like, this is what's happening to like, oh, there's so much more going on in this world than like, you know, 80% of the population probably know about or think about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, and <clears throat> if you, okay, for what I'm about to say, if any of you identify with what I'm about to describe, no judgment, like, you know, we're all, I think we all go through that phase of like being institutionalized, right. And being in that state of mind and thinking there's nothing more, but where there's a lot of people where all they want to do is just sit and be at home and sleep like they don't think about what they can do they don't think about like I mean even part of the institution right even like different activities you can do they don't think about hiking they don't think about just anything that is out and about that where you don't have to like be part of this routine or this program or again like the institution institutionaliz institutionalization oh that's a word yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of syllables um to not be a part of that even in your brain like being on the hamster wheel right that's like the biggest way we are institutionalized but there's so many other ways where it's like we're even just enslaved in our minds we've just kind of allowed it to happen you know and as you were talking about like what it's like to come in this role as a kid right into recognize that there's a lot wrong with it right it's like I remember being so even just like sensitive right so it's like there's the energetic sensitivity but then there's like the emotional sensitivity and yeah I'm an I'm a I'm a sensitive person I'm an emotional person but there's a reason for that right it's like that's it's because, part of it that's yeah, all part of it exactly yeah. that's part of it and so yeah realizing really early on like oh these are not my people this is not like, this is not what my soul would say is normal or is liking, but I have to find, figure out how to survive this mm -hmm. somehow. How am I going to survive this? And so the way I survived it for most of like childhood and like almost early adulthood was just hiding. Mm -hmm. Honestly, just try to not make noise. Just try to make sure people don't realize you're there. Like just get, just get through it, just survive. And then you know, then I was like, Ooh, alcohol. What is this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and drugs? I mean, come on. <laughs> Look what happens when I consume that. Whoa, that's nice. Um, yeah, total numb, right? Totally numbing out. And then even throughout all those moments, like all th those years, like having these moments where my gifts were like on overdrive mm -hmm. and things were happening. And it was like, 
either people around me couldn't accept it and I could and I couldn't talk about it or I was just like the, like I don't know what to do with this and I'm just going to try to hide and run and ignore and whatever right um <laughs> flashing back to some moments though mm-hmm. um spirits messing with people around me which is actually kind of funny but anyway uh, <laughs> yeah, won't get into that um but yeah, then getting to that place of like, I just need to be numb to get through this experience. And then one day I won't be here anymore. And then it'll be fine. Like literally thinking of it like that um, until you hit that point, right? Like you said, where it's like, oh, I can't anymore. Like, yeah. oh, it's time to get to work. Oh shit. Okay. I see what's happening. Okay. I got some healing to do. I got some reflection to do. And yeah. you start to fall back on your gifts that were always there that get you through it. Yeah. which is like amazing and crazy at the same time. It's, it's a whirlwind. It is. It's a complete whirlwind. And I had a lot of help. I did not do this on my own. Anybody. I had a lot of help and um, one with like 12 step programs, therapy, you know, different types of therapies. And then um, even just, you know, in a lot of the books I read, there were so many hints and tips in how to empower myself and really just the belief of that I can do that like I think that just comes with one I think age helps a lot I mean I'm older (laughs) I'm older (laughs) I'm older and letting my grade grow out and um but also like um being in this world and then not using and drinking and um numbing out as much anymore and like kind of dipping my toe in the sea of reality (laughs) which you know living in non-reality and illusion is a very powerful like denial is very powerful yeah a lot of people live in that like right now and I'm not judging anybody's journey because everybody has their journey of where they are and what it takes to get where you are like Um, we were talking about that, like that spiritual ego and stuff like judging anybody's journey because it's going to take what it takes. And like, like where you and I are right now is we get to help awaken other people just by being ourselves. Right. And by being honest and authentic about who we are. And, uh, and like, oh God, I just lost my train of thought right there. I totally just, I just zoned out. Spirit went, (laughs) (laughs) that's all you gotta say it's so funny when that happens right because it's like you can see it like everything that you're gonna say like like paragraphs ahead and then just just like that just plucked it out of the head that's all I was supposed to say but we're done here we're gonna go no just kidding well but spiritual ego I think that is something to Mm -hmm. to speak of because it's like I mean, I still see it and again it's I think everybody goes through that phase because it's part of the the self-work right? It's also part of like breaking down into unconditional love. Cause when you're really in that place of just being and really non-judgmental, like there, like spiritual ego is not a thing, Mm -hmm. right? It's like, it's, it's like, it's the bridge. It's the bridge from living in that kind of institutionalized mindset and that kind of numb mindset to feeling something and recognizing you're experiencing something, but then getting over to that other realm of freedom from being institutionalized. Um, well, and how many people run from feeling anything at all? Yeah. And really that, I mean, that's being human, right? Like is to feel. And I remember being um, chastised for being so sensitive or for feeling so deeply. And I learned and I wasn't even told this. I think I just picked it up somewhere. Like, no, my feeling is my gift. My feeling is my superpower because I can see so much beauty and yet I can also see so much pain, but it's because I'm, I allow myself to feel so deeply, right? Just like, um, one of my gifts is I know I transmute for the collective around me. Like if there's a million people in Los Angeles, I'm one of those people here. That's because I, I live in LA County, like that, um, <laughs> that I take all of that shit, all of that dense energy that people are putting out by having these feelings, these strong feelings that they're running from. And I transmute it and transform it into something lighter for the collective. And like, I just remember being pissed. Cause I would be like, why am I all of a sudden crying? I was having a great day. And it, what it is, is it's like the waves of emotion hit me. And then I get to feel them for everybody and then turn them into something else. But I remember like feeling cursed, (laughs) like 17, (laughs) I remember telling my friend, yeah, I was telling my friend, I'm like, 
why am I cursed to feel all this so deeply and so much? And he's like, I don't know. I feel it too. And, um, and then I was driving down the street like a few years ago and I'm like, oh, I, I just started crying. And I'm like, why, why the curse? And then all of a sudden the spirit comes in and goes, this isn't a curse. This is your gift. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> and then it, it, like just cha- it was a huge paradigm shift of, oh, this is one of my gifts, which is part of my purpose of lightening the load and helping humanity to feel their feelings and and not be so plagued in that deep mire of of pain and and you know suffering yeah yeah that grid work the grid work oh god <laughs> the grid work yeah like i you know those were days where i'm reminded i'm basically a, a battery <laughs> yeah you feel it. Up. yeah yeah <laughs> Juice. There's that word again. Juice. <laughs> juice. We're all just juice. We're just lubricant. Um, yeah, it's it's a hard road of acceptance. I think it took me a long time to to accept. I mean, there's still moments where I'm like, really? <laughs> well, there's still <laughs> resignation, right? Like, I'll be resigned to it, but I'm not really happy about it. And then yeah. there's the acceptance where it's like, okay, I guess this is what's going on, and I'm I'm gonna be okay with it. Yeah. Cause in all reality, like I wouldn't trade it for anything. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And you know, it's funny when you have to like deal with, how do I want to, what do, okay. I've been calling 3D. them matrixy people, but like, I feel like that's not the right word. 3D people, 3D huh. people. Okay. 3, 3D people. I feel like we're going to come up with a really like, like, like a really interesting word at some point soon for that. Um, where they find Asteroid. out what I do, huh? Asteroids. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the word I want to say is inappropriate. So I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Just say it. Just say no, it. Okay. No, I, I, there's, I mean, I, I, you guys know me. I'm like, I am total free flow, but like, I, I do understand sometimes there's like, oh, that's a boundary that'll get me. I try in to serious anger trouble. her on to do the wrong things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the ratchet um, friend. <laughs> um, where you got to deal with like matrixy people and they find out what you do and their response sometimes like the last person I had this conversation with, I won't, I won't say who they were because just in case they watch this. Um, I don't know if they would though. They probably well, watch like whispering, like no one's gonna hear you. <laughs> don't tell them, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they go, Well, what were you doing before all of that? And I was like, Oh, my soul was dying in accounting. <laughs> She goes, well, at least you have something to fall back on. I was like, fall back on? It was like, uh, oh, oh, no. <laughs> like, baby, I'm in deep. It's like, that is that is many a lifetimes ago. I don't like, even if I fell off the wagon, so to speak, or regressed, I don't think I could ever go back, even fall back deep enough to back to that version of myself. No, no. no. Well, and I feel like we're all put where we're supposed to be. You know what I mean? Um, and whether people accept that about themselves that's a whole different thing. Yeah. But like, even, I mean, I'm still working my, my nine to five job. Right. But, um, I obviously I've tried to get out of it, but I'm supposed to be there. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing exactly, but I'm, I'm still supposed to be there. And, uh, I mean, maybe that'll soon change. You never know, but like, (laughs) I don't wink as cute as you. (laughs) What are you talking about? Your wink is super cute. You have to get the whole face involved. See, oh, and that's the problem. I like, I want to do like, be funny with, so I make a funny face, but go <laughs> ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about. We were just all where we're supposed to be, right? So it's yeah. like, you are exactly where you're supposed to be because I feel like you awaken so many people and you help people like definitely um, anchor into their own spirituality and their own gifts. Yeah. And like as a healer, so, a lot of times I feel like I bring out like I, I make it okay for people to have their spiritual gifts because most of the people who come to me are like, they obviously have gifts, but they're afraid of them or didn't know about them. And I'm like, you know, that's that, right? And they're like, what are you talking about? You're right. And then we have that <laughs> whole thing. And, um, or I help heal other healers. Like, yeah. you know, that's the thing too. Because as healers, you, we need a lot of, we need a lot of help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doing this all on our own people (laughs) well it's like if you think about it right it's like what we're doing it's like 
we're basically playing like, you know, if you equate it to like sports, like we're playing big games all the time. Like we need people to come in and massage us. We need ice baths. Like we need, we need all the things. And it isn't easy on the vessel, which is the other thing. It's like all of that energy is like, there's so much energy behind the energy. I don't know how else to explain it. No. There's so much power and oomph behind the codes and the energy that comes through that's coming from such higher dimensions that it's like the vessel, it's like vessel has to take all that, harness yeah. it, work with it, let it flow. Like meat you suit. feel that shit. The poor meat suit gets heavy. I'm, I'm blaming all of the energy and that's why I have my <laughs> extra meat suit. <laughs> hey, but that honestly, I like, really think it's true. That's a yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a thing. That's a thing. And like talking about spiritual ego. So, okay. I like, I got to get into this topic. This, this topic I'm about to bring up can be a whole episode in of itself, but yeah. I'm really over people and their spiritual egos, shaming people for their diet choices and yeah. for having extra weight. Cause sometimes there's a reason that extra weight is there. It might not be because that's not what you're doing and that's fine, but other people might need that shit because they're doing some other shit that may be a little crazy or whatever. No, and yeah. a lot of it, I feel, um, especially comes from like trauma or abuse and you don't, your body is constantly in that state of fight or flight, which then creates the cortisol, which then holds the fat in the body. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you have to learn how to really train your nervous system, which I mean, with everything I've gone through, I'm only getting that to that now. <laughs> like- <laughs> you know, I'm working on that. Like, that's a thing, right? It's like, okay, I don't drink anymore. I don't do drugs. I quit smoking. Like, you know, it's like, I quit vaping and, and like, you know, I didn't quit reading because I love to read, but like now I'm getting into like the food thing and the body thing where it's like, I've accepted my body a long time ago, but I do want to be more mobile and I want to hike more and, you know, so it's not even about weight. It's about being comfortable and being able to move. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the shaming is bullshit. Sorry. Yeah. No, it is. It's bullshit. You can call it what it is. It, it is. It's, it's bullshit. bullshit. It's bullshit. And yeah. there's actually- for any reason, shaming anybody about anything is really bullshit. Yeah. But this like this idealized view of like this is what a spiritual person should look like. Because mm-hmm. there is, right? There is this like look. There's <laughs> I didn't know. I feel like I could already like see the image in I my did. mind and I'm I like saw it. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> we've had experiences <laughs> but there there is there's this like needing to look like this and needing to wear this and need you know what I mean and it's like that's like I'm so over that bullshit well no because I people have definitely I, these visions in their head of what a spiritual person looks like and it's usually some willowy creature in a really (laughs) thin white you know almost like buddhist garb right and then you float and nothing bothers you and you can change the the street lights to green wherever you go (laughs) you know what i mean it's like it's like that and like that you're never perturbed or bothered and you know you can do yoga for three hours like you know like that's what i have in my head as uh, like what a spiritual person looks like, but that's not true at all. No, yeah. it's like, I've met so many different people who look so many mm-hmm. different ways. Yeah. And I think it's important to show up as you are, as who you are. Yes. And that's what spirit wants from us is to just be who we are, love who we are. Cause you're not going to get anybody else, you know? And it's like, you were talking about uh, Ruiz and the mastery mm-hmm. of love and like the four yeah. agreements, like, to be impeccably yourself like that's the beauty that's magic is to be yourself and then harness all of that energy and magic within yourself which was given to you at birth it's just the matter of finding it and then offering that to the world and that's what spirit wants for us right that's what the universe the galactic beings all want for us is to just for us to be ourselves because each of us hold a key an individual key right yeah. into this huge door full of locks yes. and my key won't fit her key and we're not going to open that door all by ourselves we need to do it together yes yes like my book preach <laughs> preach <laughs> preach sister well and uh so okay so i i do watch like different like shows and movies that i feel guided to watch and so right now there's a whole like neurodivergent themes right now that i'm like working through and like for myself but like anything that we all do individually is also affecting the collective right 
And so I'm watching Young Sheldon right now and <laughs> I'm loving it. I like Annie Potts is amazing. My dad but- loves that show. He feels like Sheldon. He goes, Natalie, he goes, I think I've been autistic this whole time and just never was diagnosed. And I'm like, really? And he's like, <laughs> yeah. And he tells me all these, I go, I think you are. And then I found this checklist and I'm like, I go, oh my God, I like totally resonate with like 80% of this checklist for women with autism. And I'm just like, I think about my mom. And then my mom goes, Natalie, you're not. And, I'm, and my dad's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of us are. And it's like, and we can categorize it as neurodivergent or we can categorize it as like, you know, one way I've been looking at it is just an ev- evolution of us. I think it's an or, evolutionary like change. Yeah. yeah, I definitely think so too. Um, And I think some people are equating it to like a symptom of the crazy times like we live in and like what it does to like, right. When like really we're supposed to be living out in nature and not with all this like crazy shit and like high paced life and all that. But there was this episode I saw. So spoiler, if anyone's not seen Young Sheldon, actually it's not that much of a spoiler if I mentioned this, now that I think about it. So he was like struggling, right? Cause he's like, he's, he's, you know, he's a science guy. And so all of his idols are science guys. So he's trying to, do something that Einstein never did. He's it's like a specific kind of physics math problem and he's trying to solve it, but Einstein never even did this, right? So he's like making himself crazy. So his mom takes him to uh, their pastor and he's like, I don't know, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. And he's like, well, why are you, why are you beating yourself up? Why do you want to do this? He's like, cause I want to be like Einstein. So like, well, why do you want to be like Einstein? Because he's great and he does this, he does that. And then he's like, Sheldon, when you like leave this world and God, God's not going to ask you why you weren't Einstein. He's going to ask you why you weren't Sheldon. Yeah. And it was like, oh. <laughs> oh, but that's true. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. It's very true. And it's like, I mean, I've been, I've been embracing myself for a number of years at this point, but still even hearing that line, it was like, oh, it just was like impactful. Right. And it's like, imagine if people just kind of had that in their minds. Like, why am I not me? Yeah. Like, why am I not me? And really the great grace, the great, I think, purpose of us all is to find out who we are deeply and to love ourselves for exactly that being, right? And yeah. it's like, so it's such a, a, you can see it when it, the light comes on in someone's eyes and they realize like, oh, I'm like good just unto myself, right? And can accept themselves, you know, they're their darkness and distortion and then there's the, like the beautiful assets and gifts it's like but we're all one thing like we're it's all integrated together and let's just accept that and figure that out yeah 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 <laughs> dude <laughs> one time some guy from michigan got mad at me because i go dude he's like why are you calling me dude i'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because yeah I like I never realized how much I say dude honestly until I met you and then it like you know because we do we do do that a lot <laughs> but yeah it's like I don't know it's just ingrained in me yeah it's just it's a California signature what can I say it's a thing it's a thing yeah yeah <sighs> people showing up as themselves hmm. and including their like their bite their teeth their yes. their dark darkness whatever you want to call it right because it's like yeah. I'm also really over that which I know something is also the collective is working through like being okay with making people uncomfortable being okay oh. being angry and expressing it being okay being like what you did's fucked up and just yeah. saying it yeah. right it, like you know and have the consequences play out and not have it turn into like an end-all be-all right like have it turn into a conversation and then you can like move past it and let it go exactly. you know well I, that's important because you know we have so much dysfunction in our families and in our society it's like it's bound to come up in every relationship right and then the ability to say like know yourself and say this isn't okay with me i'm going to set this boundary it's so helpful for both of the parties to have these boundaries because then we can teach each other what's all right for each other, right? Yeah. And like before it's more like there's that passive aggression or there's like manipulation, which I've done all those things. I was raised in that. Like <laughs> I've done all that. I picked up that to survive, right? These survival skills of how you, you can navigate through dysfunction and through mm-hmm. 
you know, this crazy society we live in. And, um, and like, but the, I think the more you learn to say, accept yourself, the more you realize you don't need to do all that stuff and you can be direct. You can say, you know, that really, I don't like that. And can you do that? And it doesn't have to be with anger. It yeah. doesn't have to be with, um, you know, displeasure or being upset with someone. It's just a voicing of needs. And the sooner, like when I learned how to say no, that was so amazing. Like, And when I learned how to set boundaries, I just set boundaries everywhere. And I was like, this is great, you know? <laughs> Because it really did. It's like as someone who I felt like didn't know how to set any boundaries before, it's like you do kind of like want to hide like you were talking about or you just want to like you get angry or hurt and then you're just kind of walking through like narrowly like as if you're living, which I've been watching a lot of hoarders. So (laughs) this is my analogy. You're living in that like hoarder house that only has these little pathways, right? Yeah. But I think in acceptance of yourself and setting boundaries, it's like you clear out all of that and you create this huge space for yourself to live and be and like if each person could take up space and take up the space with who they are and shine their lights right it's like whether it's 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 gonna hurt someone's feelings or make them uncomfortable then that's their problem they get to deal with that and then they come back come back to you and can say you know you hurt my feelings and then you can say I really didn't mean to I was just kind of telling you my needs and hey how can we work past this exactly exactly it's like once people actually do it right and realize how easy it is and I think it helps to have like obviously like someone who's receptive on the other end right like when that person's not ready for that like I mean it's just you can't you can't yeah you just you kind of just gotta walk away um but yeah, that it really is that easy. Like that easy. it's that it's that easy. It's that easy. It's interesting you mentioned hoarders because as you said that, I was literally thinking like, I wonder if you're working on that part of the collective because it's like I keep hearing these like little hoarder stories just out in my reality like randomly. But I'm not. I know I'm not working with that collective like right now energetically. But maybe you are. That's kind of fascinating. I mean, maybe like I've been obs- okay. Because my friend Holly was here from Hawaii recently. And so we and we were kicking it over at her friend's place where she was staying and she put on hoarders. And I was like, God, I forgot how much I love this show. Because there's something so cathartic and like redeeming and redemptive in mm-hmm. each episode where this person goes in completely. And it's very um, apropos for a society, like, we're, like what we were just talking about. Like we're so filled with stuff and we're trying to fill this hole that isn't going to be filled with stuff, right? And like they they learn how to deal with the difficult emotions of why they were trying to numb out by buying this stuff and covering themselves completely and creating these walls of either trash or just purchases or whatever to keep themselves safe and not having to feel. And then by the end of the show, it's like this clear path and this clean space. And you can see their whole being just so much lighter and beautiful. And I'm like, that's what my healing I feel like does. Like, I feel like I get to clear away so much of the, like the, the fodder and the, okay, let me just tell one story. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, was, I was doing shrooms once before I stopped doing all that stuff. And, um, I went home at the end of the party night and I was sitting with my candle writing poetry and, um, and of course I didn't realize I was still really loaded, but I was, <laughs> and I realized like, Oh, <laughs> I, can, Sorry, I, realized, I realized we're like candles we're like the candle wick like you know the candle wick is surrounded by the wax and like if like the wax can overtake the little wick and then we burn out right but mm. no if we can shine bright enough we burn the wax and it burns away from us right but if oh. we try to dim our shine that wax like can overtake us so those are amazing a analogy for you guys today <laughs> shine bright so the the, the wax doesn't overtake you I, I like that though. And that's such a shroom, like epiphany. <laughs> I love I shrooms. shrooms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It's uh, it's interesting times of divergence. It is the, the people who are going to do that and the people that can't. And um, I love all of us who are leading the charge, right. Who are saying the things that other people are like, <laughs> like I was having lunch with my one of my bosses the other day and I talked about the energy right and the, yeah the difficult energy I was feeling in my new workplace and he looked at me like I don't know what you're talking about right and uh 
And then we were talking about something later and I go, yeah, I remember going to the city and like, it just felt so good. And I, and I go, remember, I told you, I feel the energy of places. And he's like, oh, I get it. And I'm like, yeah, I go, that's it. Like certain places can make you feel a certain way. Right. It's like people are who normally wouldn't understand what we're talking about or think we're crazy. <laughs> they're getting it because yeah. there's, there's a discourse and there's, um, a vocabulary now for discussing it. And I think, especially during the pandemic and like that going inward where we weren't mm. constantly bombarded with say entertainment as much anymore, like by being out and away and we really had to be with ourselves. A lot of people found out and saw a lot about themselves that they wanted to change and understand. Yeah, God, that's so true. And I know that some people really thought that, but oh, I was so kind of, I was honestly excited. I, I was loved like, it. Oh. I loved it. I was like, <laughs> yes, I don't have to go anywhere. This is great. I mean, I went to work, but that was like I was alone there too. Never mind. Well, and people like had to basically give you space. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, I don't have to have people like right up on me, touching me in my bubble. Mm-hmm. But I also realized like, yeah, it was gonna force people to sit. And look at themselves and mm-hmm. feel their things. Yeah. Yeah. And realize what they actually wanted and what they don't want. Like there are at least a few people. Um, I like I can't give specifics because they're probably gonna watch this, but there are at least a few people <laughs> that from the beginning of the pandemic to like now, like seeing their shift in what matters to them is like a 180. And it's just like it's amazing. Of course, no. I don't, I don't like say all of this stuff that we're talking about, but I just go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I mean, really like that's what mattered, right? Like yeah. really found out what was important, what could be pared away and pared down out of your life and what you could, the basic necessities of what you needed. And then also you got to look at what helped you thrive and give you joy and peace. Right. And it was like, oh, I'm living so much more simply now and I feel so much more peaceful. I'm not running around like a chicken with my head cut off trying to please everybody and go to everything and do everything, right? And then also yeah. just um, really seeing yourself. And a lot of people hadn't been seeing themselves or their partners or their families for a long time because they were so busy. Yeah, yeah. And no, then the spotlight true. on mental health, like that's yeah. come up so much and I'm so glad so glad because I feel like even with um like the younger generations now like their ability to state yeah my mental health isn't okay and I need help with that like it's so much more prevalent now like thank god because I mean as a kid who constantly wanted to die I mean literally like suicide always sounded so (laughs) you know I shouldn't be laughing but I think but but we can laugh about it now because it's like you know yeah I mean, I just remember my parents finding suicide notes when I was like 12 or 13. And like, it was because I was in so much pain. I didn't know how to deal with anything. Yeah. Now, like there are so many resources for people to say, no, I'm not okay. You know? And now I've learned that I'm at a point where, I mean, even the other day I was living, going, God, I don't want to get out of bed. And I am not joyful all the time, people. Like <laughs> a lot of the times I'm like, oh, this is really hard and heavy and I don't want to do it. I, I actually never want to do anything. I'm really lazy. But um, <laughs> maybe that's the truth. But I do it anyway. And, uh, but it's like, yeah, it, it's like, I didn't know how to reach out. And now I can reach out and say, you know, I'm really hurting and I share my pain with other people. And, and like, spread the you we spread the love we also got to spread the grief right yeah with each other yeah types are important and that's something that I'm like I'm still cementing like as part of my um just I guess knowing right like that I can actually like share with people that like I'm going through shit like I don't have to be in it by myself yeah. um you know because I have I've got a very beautiful group of friends right now which thank you for also being a part of that (laughs) love you um but it is I still have moments where it's hard and it's like and it's a good reminder where it's like okay it's okay to mention it and you're not being a burden or you're not like being annoying or yeah or like being accused of like seeking attention that's like that's also something that's definitely part of like my like my programming yeah. right because it's like oh if someone's like sharing their pain it's like seen as like all these different distorted ways instead of a human being like 
I need help. <laughs> like, instead of a human being going like, I'm not okay. Aren't we like communal beings? Like, is that not yeah. a thing anymore? Like, okay. <laughs> no. And it's so important also. And that's where I think boundaries come in a lot and being direct and accepting and loving of who you are, because if you surround yourself with people who know themselves, like, for instance, if you called me and you're in pain, I can say, oh, I can hold space for you right now. And so there may come a time where I'll be like, you know what, I really can't hold space for you right now. And I'm, I'm like going through something myself. Can we maybe talk about something lighter and then we'll pick this up again later? You know, like yeah. having that open conversation and not like where I can state it instead of just not answering the phone. You know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> Then yeah. there were those times, right? It's like yeah. be with open, honest, authentic people. Yeah. Which is why like I like to ask first. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I'm really good about can that. you do you have bandwidth? Like, and sometimes like I'm even tempted to be like, don't even respond if you don't. Like it's okay. <laughs> so funny though. Well, and that's like as me, like now where I've gotten to in my my state of being have a lot of bandwidth and then when I don't I check out for a while and watch three hours of hoarders you know or whatever <laughs> dude I cannot watch hoarders it's it that is a hard one for me to watch it gives me so much anxiety I I was, did get anxiety at first but now I've just like become so part of the it doesn't I'm like oh they're gonna give into this it's gonna get, it's gonna be okay and then if they don't I'm like oh she totally wasted her chance to clear away her shit Wait, so out of curiosity, what happens if they like refuse or they just like say, no, I can't handle this? Like what happens? And things don't get cleaned out. And it's kind of sad because some of them, like there was this one lady who just couldn't let go of very, very much stuff. And so they just kind of got one room. They tried to get at least one room where she had some like livability. But then you see the boxes all stacked up in the other rooms. Oh, it's sad. And it's, it's more sad for the family who cares about that person. Right. Yeah. 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 It's rough. And a lot of it is women and like older women. Oh, okay. That, that is sad. Yeah. And it's like, and I know there's so many different things mental health wise that go into hoarding. Right. And so it's like, I grew up in a very like opposite household right? Where things were getting cleaned constantly, like to the point where I was like, I was almost a little bit of a hoarder of like, don't touch my things. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> I went from kind of messy to like OCD clean, dude. <laughs> that was different too. Now I fall somewhere in between. People come over and I'm like, my house, my place is a mess. And they're like, they come in and they go, clean. what are you talking about? I'm like, well, there's a lot of dust. They're like, shut up. <laughs> Well, cleaning is so cathartic. It's like, I sometimes you just, oh, you hate it? I mean, I do it. <laughs> I have to, because I have cats and I don't like the hair and the dust, but do I want to? No, there should be a machine that you could just go. Don't even get me started on the AI <laughs> home robot <laughs> situations. <laughs> I need an AI cleaning robot. Train my cats to dust for me. I've already forgot what they're called, like helpers or like house assist. I forget what like the term they're calling them, but yeah, I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Personally, I'm okay without them, but I, I do enjoy cleaning, but it's gotta be like, how do I want to explain it? It's like, it's a part of how I transmute the energy in my place. You know, it's like, and when I do it, I do it. It's like hours of rearranging and cleaning and scrubbing. And then I might not clean for like, I don't know, a week or so. A week but, or so. Okay. So a week or so. I think I deep clean maybe like once a month and then okay. I get really weird and OCD and I start going into weird places like that I'm like why am I doing this no one's ever going to notice it including myself but I can't help that <laughs> but then there's other times when I'm just like lazy and I'm like you know I'll just give this a quick pass of like some dusting and vacuuming and then that's good yeah yeah, yeah. I mean I wasn't always like that I for sure because like I grew up in such a very very clean it affects you it does and I I did I went opposite it was like I'm gonna hold on to everything I possibly can and then like when oh. I moved out on my own it was like yeah I didn't I like didn't clean at all like there were months of like I mean sorry this might be a little team I maybe was grossing you out but yeah where I didn't clean at all and I just held on to shit but then I started moving a lot <laughs> and it was like yeah, oh you a lot yeah and I was like I can't do this <laughs> and then I realized I just had like 
buckets of random stuff and like part of my some of my weird idiosyncrasies I hate mail I hate it I hate looking at it (laughs) yeah please don't mail me anything I hate (laughs) I hate looking at it I hate touching it I just I hate everything about the whole experience of mail and so when I was still in that phase of I guess in a way being like a little mini hoarder I mean I didn't get to the point where it was like I couldn't function in my own place right or there was trash everywhere like I wasn't like that there's just stuff needless stuff I actually had like a good couple bins of just mail throughout years and then I was like oh, I need to do something about that I'm getting in trouble with different that? it was over the course of like years that I just started oh. moving with me to, like wherever I was going <laughs> but I am in control of my male situation now. I mean, I'm a very different person now. I just like, I just had to tackle it. And then once I tackled it, I had to just like get into a system at least and just try to stay on top of it. So yeah, I mean, I don't have that anymore, but yeah, there was a time if you looked at my closet, it was just like, why is there years worth of mail in your closet? <laughs> I mean, decluttering is definitely like a spiritual experience because it, it really is like your surroundings really affect your mental state and especially like us because we already are like having so much stuff move through us we really need like that cleared space yeah Yeah. I've been getting rid of a lot of stuff the library loves me because I'm giving them a lot of books yeah no it's good and I'm cleaning up my storage unit now now that I'm like back yeah which is good and it's like funny I'm finding the most random shit where it's like that oh you found was badass I love it so much oh yeah God. um what was the name of it again um Amber Cat Oracles I believe is her name oh, Amber oh. Cat Oracles I know now I want to go and find all the other decks that she, she's made if I she's still so around many decks. Yeah. yeah I, I have a lot those out as gifts you I should half of them yeah. I was doing that for a while. It's definitely like definitely a good way to get rid of decks. If you have too many or ones you just don't resonate with anymore. Yeah. 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 I have to get rid of a lot of shit. I need a new couch. <laughs> I don't believe couch. in buying couches anymore. I'm not, I'm done. I'm over it. I can't. Oh my God. So you can make your own. I was looking like you get these cinder blocks and then you get like two by fours and like put them in the cinder blocks and then just put cushions on top of them. Wait, say that again. I'm okay, like, so you know the cinder blocks, they're like the this the concrete and then they have the holes in them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get the cinder blocks on um, like three sets, and then you put the two by four pieces of wood in the holes. Okay. And they act as like the seat, and then you can put cushions on them. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's a good way. That's a good DIY way. I see you trying it. I'm like, are people really thinking I'm that? I'm like, oh, people think I'm nuts already. <laughs> Well, you already know I'm in love with my folding mattress, which like doubles as a couch. I'm in love with it. And like, I know when I explained it to you, I didn't do a good job, but like, I'm just, I'm just in love with it. It's like, it's super comfortable and yeah, you're sleeping on the floor, but it's comfortable. Like you don't like, you feel like you're sleeping on a mattress and you just like, like, it just goes like, bloop, bloop. like just so important. Cause you don't sleep. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't sleep when I sleep, I'm working. So I don't, I don't actually sleep. <laughs> I know. I and know. then I'm waking up every two to three hours because of my cat. Um, he's saving you from situations. I'm just telling you. I, yeah, I think you might, you might be onto something there. You might definitely be onto yeah. something. So I'm going to keep that in mind. Um, speaking of last night. Okay. That's one thing. And then we should probably, we should probably wrap up. <laughs> How long um, have we even been talking? I don't know. Uh, like hour and a half. We've oh, had well, like five, six hour conversations, people. So we're doing good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's kind of amazing how long we can stay on the phone and just keep going and going and going. Um, I heard this crazy craft last night. It like woke me up out of a dead sleep. And I- I'm like- What did it sound like? It almost sounded military, but it sounded like, like massive. And I mean, like massive, like something you'd see out of a movie is what it sounded like. Cause it was so loud that it started to like shake the walls. Yeah. And this was like three in the morning, yeah. like in Sedona, like where, where we and actually don't have in Sedona. Yeah. Like we don't even get like consistent air traffic 
Like I used to know it was Thursday because we'd get the big plane that fly over on Thursdays. <laughs> like it's we like, quiet. yeah, yeah, it's very quiet, and it sounded so close. And I almost got up to look, but I was like, I just, I, you know, I just couldn't get myself up to go and actually look at what it was because I also just was didn't know what was going on. It almost gave me those vibes of like, and I don't even want to try to manifest this, but like, I had a thought, like a split second thought of like are we being invaded right now? Like that was like literally a split second thought of what I, of what came through me. Wonder if other people heard it or if it was just for you. Oh, that would be crazy. Have, I mean, have you been paying attention? Okay. I know on TikTok, this is a thing, which you're not really a TikToker person mm-hmm. and I'm not a huge TikToker, but um, I've been trying to like, you know, pay attention to what's going on, put my ear to the you know street. And uh, there's been all these sightings. Oh, Okay. Okay, see, now I feel like we could do a whole other video on There's this one. There's been all these um, sightings and they had this whole conference where this guy who was former military was talking about it. So I've definitely seen more reports of it, yeah. but okay, so here's the thing, because this is where it flashes me back to 2020 when I got all those downloads of what's going to happen, right? Where it's like, okay, we're going to have the pandemic, then we're going to have some war shit go down, and then they're going to do fake alien invasions to scare people mm. against aliens, Yeah. And so I have been hearing, hearing and seeing a lot of these like UFO reports. Right. And so it's like, I don't know how much of it is the government trying to scare people. Yeah. Right. Or it's like me or they're just reporting what goes on naturally. Right. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know. But like, that's what I'm not getting. Okay. This is the weird thing. Usually I'll get a feeling about something and I'll know if it's like true or not just by like my feeling, but like, I haven't been, it's like devoid of feeling. I just see it. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Way. But it's not like I have a fear or even a excitement. It's just, Oh, this is, is this happening? Yeah. My one little random hair. <laughs> um, yeah. That's how I feel about it too. Like when I see the reports, like the recent reports, it's like, I don't, I don't, yeah, like you, it's exactly what you said. I don't feel much of anything from that. Like actually, okay, now that I think about it, it's making me think it's more of like military influence trying to scare people because it makes me feel how I normally feel about all the crazy shit they'd put out where it's just like, it's almost like watching a movie or like watching a reality show, like a bad reality show. And it's like, okay, how are they going to wrap up this season finale of horrors? You know you know what I mean? What are they going to try to pull out of their ass now? <laughs> yeah, like during the pandemic with the, what was it? The hornet wasps or whatever. It's like that came out for like a month and then they were gone. We never heard about it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, <laughs> I don't even remember that. But like, I don't, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Um, you were in your little Sedona enclave I think during that I was so insulated it's like it's crazy and even when I I went driving out a little bit yesterday I left Sedona border like and when I say border I mean like there's an area between like Sedona and Cottonwood where it's like I can feel like the bubbles kind of gone and instantly I felt like the weight of energy like hit me Mm -hmm. of like the collective and then I was like (laughs) excuse my language I was like fucked up until I got back into like within that border and then I was like oh I'm insulated again like okay I'm cool like I'm nice though because you know I'm here (laughs) yeah I'm in it but the thing is even today like um sometimes and the energy's been weird because it's been dispersing and then it'll come back so like I feel like over the last few months it's been really heavy and then the sun was out today and I feel like the sun really helped disperse a lot of it. So I was out today, like touching my trees. I touched, okay. So I touched trees and uh, they talked to me and they like clear me out and ground me. And like the energy moves through me and it's like such a beautiful feeling. So I talked to a lot of trees today and uh, like that helps me in this metropolis to feel insulated. And then my apartment, cause you know, I've just done so much spell work and energy work here. Yeah. Your apartment definitely is a, is a safe haven for yeah. people who are sensitive. Yeah, everyone who comes in, they're like, Oh, it's so good in here. And I'm like, great. <laughs> good. Good side. Good, good side. <laughs> I'm doing my work right. Yeah. Cause LA that city like started to crush, like physically crush me. It was like, I couldn't, I couldn't it's stay. I've been wanting to get out of here for a long time, but, um, Sorry, my nicotine. That's okay. Um, but I think the more I've 
keyed into my gifts and done the healing, I feel like there's more of a purpose for me to be here. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, I've, I've been feeling more okay about being here. Okay. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's funny. Cause it's like, <laughs> cause when I get comfortable, they yeah. move me. Huh? When I like finally get comfortable, like in a place or yeah. accept whatever new situation oh, they they're put me. like move yeah they're like all right it's time it's time you, you're done you did what you needed to do up and Ooh. out uh, not yeah. saying that that's your case but i'll it's be open like, to that too i'll be open to that too i'll move on over to sedona too we'll have a whole little collective space we'll have our own like little thing dude we- sedona needs it sedona needs it like during the pandemic there's so many people who came here that would not have been here and it has messed with the energy here yeah, because totally there was has. a big difference when I came to Sedona a few years ago than when I came for later. Yeah. The energy was different. Yeah, there's some was, people that it was to mixed. Leave. It was like, <laughs> it was it like was, what happened? It wasn't like all orified. It was like mixed energy with like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Oh, I got you. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, there are definitely some energies that need to leave. Um, Yeah. And I do feel like that's partly why like I'm back. And even when I came back, like I told you, it was like, it was a little weird at first. Like I could tell there was like something that like was non-physical that was like not happy that I was here. And it's like dealing with that was interesting. And that's like, that's been gone now. I'd be interested how I'd feel if I went. Yeah. Come over. I'm going to come over. Okay. Okay. He's over there. We'll do another podcast. (laughs) I feel like this could just be a whole series in and of itself. (laughs) The Island Turtle Hekate Honey series. (laughs) And and honestly, anybody who's listening, I'm probably going to split this into parts just because it's like, I I already know it's like, no, we're going on almost two hours at this point. So probably going to split this into two parts. And then I'll help you do your shorts too. I'll be like, this is Island Turtle. And I'll have like, I'll do your hair to match. I'll do my hair to match you and I'll wear some glasses and stuff. (laughs) Well, and it's funny too with shorts because I never like, I also never fil- film myself, right? It's like, yeah. there are a lot of people who like, are, you know, figure out how to do that or like, that's part of their thing, which, you know, more power to you. I just, yeah, that's just something I never think to do. <laughs> Already got your glasses going. This is Island Turtle. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the whole UFO stuff. Because it's like, I feel like, too, there's so many people are so privy to the weirdness and the corruption and the bullshit that mm-hmm. it's like, they like we like we just can't buy it anymore. I mean, even people who are not as like, you know, awake or whatever word you want to use for it, like even they can't buy it anymore. Like a friend of mine, we'll call him Sage. Uh, <laughs> Sage! <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. Sage. Um he was bringing up some crazy shit that I wasn't even privy to about what's going on in the school systems with like sexual edu- with sex, uh, sex education. I couldn't even say the words. Hey, what are they doing with sex education? They're like, and okay, I, okay, to be fair, I don't know the how- gender, like studies kind of thing or? Not really, but they're <laughs> like- <laughs> That's okay. Sorry, it's okay. That's okay. I've been trying hard not to burp in the microphone. Shaman burps. Like... Oh, that's my first shaman burp. <laughs> Um, I think they're using that as an avenue for it, but to be fair, I haven't learned about this. It's just what I've heard from Sage. So, you know, obviously go do your own research for anybody who's listening. Um, but there are school systems that are like basically using explicit pornography and like nice. language and yeah. And no, language and stuff. I don't think so. Well, and he's been watching school board meetings. Cause this is like, this has become such like but a crazy where, thing. Because then there's like the craziness of where they don't want to teach kids think they're like oh this is pornography but it's not it's like something I don't know there's a lot of distortion in that whole thing like I said it was it was something he relayed to me but I do think is kind of interesting and he even said he's like I try to like talk to this about people and they don't believe me but that like you know no parents are buying into this and parents aren't uproars about stuff like this and that it's also part of the distortion behind some of the stuff that they're pushing Mm -hmm. right with like you know, with all of the whole like gender, transgender stuff, yeah. um, which, you know, that's a whole topic in and of itself too. But I feel like just let people be who they want to be. Just leave it alone. Yeah. yeah. 
but I mean, like all the stuff they're pushing in schools is like, and some and of the distortion the thing, around like, that. My, so my sister has a lot of kids in school. <laughs> And like she hasn't like she's very involved and there hasn't been any of that and I know like um it's not like the kids wouldn't tell you know what I mean right 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 so but but then there's also the whole schools are used as indoctrination points but yeah yeah so just weird stuff weird stuff weird stuff weird yeah I don't have much to say about that okay <laughs> the one topic i don't really have much to say (laughs) no that's okay that's okay um i mean i think there's all kinds of weird avenues that distorted energy is working through right now like when it comes to these like these topics and stories that we're hearing and you know and all the crazy um it's a lot yeah it's a lot yeah yeah dude dude well where can people find you People can find me on hecatehoney.com, um, on bombyspirit.com. There's a link as, uh, there's links to my Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and then my website. And uh, I'm going to be posting a lot more content. I kind of had taken a, a sabbatical from posting any content for about a year. So um I'll be starting to do that again because this is the time to really invest and put myself out there. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. That's the reading I got today. (laughs) It's time. Novel that novel's coming along. So we'll see. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you for sitting, chatting, sharing. I know I I know I always love talking with you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again. And I hope everybody who listened enjoyed. Uh, check out the links below if you're watching this on YouTube versus if you're listening elsewhere. Um, but there'll be links to the website and all information, Instagram, all the stuff. All the stuff is down all there. The stuff. Thanks, guys. Yeah. And hearts to you, too. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Everybody take care.